grateful for all of you that the Lord is blessed to be able to gather in the house of the Lord with us. And so I greet everybody by shouting praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So they want to greet all of our Grace Apostolic Church members that may not be able to be here today, maybe viewing even at this time. The Lord bless you, heaven smile upon you, and may the Lord grant you his peace. And then we would like to greet all of our online viewers, uh, Facebook viewers, and wherever you are at this particular time, thank you for taking the time to tune in with us here on this day. And I trust that even you, that you are in the best position uh, possible where you can give your full and undivided attention to the service and even unto the word of the Lord. We're just grateful, just thankful. How many of y'all can lift up your hand and say, Lord, thank you for being so good to me. Can y'all believe we're almost, tomorrow we go into the sixth month, we're almost halfway through the year, but thank God that he has seen us through thus far. I wish I had somebody to give God, help me give God some real praise. So, so, so much is happening and has happened Praise the Lord. But how many of y'all thank God you got a sound mind? How many of you are just grateful that the Lord have kept you with a desire to be saved? Now, how many of y'all thank God for his hand? Let's see how many I can get on this one. How many of y'all thank God for his protection? That's a big thing nowadays, y'all. Protection. Some of us may have even been sick, but you need to thank God for his healing power. Others, the Lord has kept us from sickness and disease. And then shootings and violence and all kinds of issues, racism and uh, po political warfare, spiritual warfare. But somebody ought to just thank God and say, Lord, can't nobody do me like you can do me. Nobody has been better to me. Come on, can I get a witness in here? Nobody! has been better to me than you have been. People have felt weak and sick and lonely and all kinds of ways. But we want you to worship the Lord with us here now. A praise team is going to come with another song. How many of you all can confess and acknowledge, Lord, you are my strength. Lord, you are my, can you say it? Lord, you are my strength. Strength like no other. I said strength like no other. And it reaches, reaches to me. Come on and clap your hands. Worship the Lord as they sing at this time.
a song that's my reality you are my strength 
strength like no other reaches to me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We're, we're making ready to pray. There's one more selection that the praise team is going to come and sing. And I want everybody to just elevate your mind. Elevate your minds. The scripture says, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. And even you that are tuned in by way of the broadcast online, I invite you again, wherever you are, to tune in as we are making ready to pray. Folk are sick. Folk are distraught. Many folks are bereaved. There are folks even still without homes. and There are people that are without jobs. There's a general state of confusion all across the world. There's perplexity. There's turmoil that many people have on the inside. But one of the greatest things that God has given to us is the thing called prayer. Sometimes when we want to be with people, we ask them to come. We invite people to come. But this song that the praise team is about to sing is a specific invitation not to just any man, any woman, any boy or girl. But it's an invitation to the Holy Ghost. You know, Pentecost is all about the Holy Ghost. And I want you to join in the spirit of the song as they sing, Come Holy Spirit, as we make ready to go before the Lord in prayer.
you are the most high God, the only Lord God, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for your great love to us, your great mercy, your grace that have been extended in each of our lives. Lord, we acknowledge that it is in you that we live, move, and have our being. And we are duty bound to give you thanks, Lord. You've been such a faithful God to each and every one of us. And Lord, you have allowed us the privilege of coming back into your house on today. Thank you for letting the doors of your house be opened up unto us. We want to thank you for the fellowship. Thank you for the fellowship, Lord that we are able to have with you in your house. Thank you for the fellowship that we're able to have with you and your people in your house. We thank you, Lord, that over the weeks, Lord God, you've been with us and you've been faithful. We want to thank you for your blessings, your healings, your deliverances, the solving of our problems. We thank you, Lord, for the building up of our faith, for sustaining each and every one of us. Lord, you've kept us with a roof of our heads amidst all of the issues of our times, kept us with food on our table, clothes on our back, and have even kept the desire to be saved and to praise your holy name. Now, Lord, upon this day, we celebrate the birth of your spirit into the church of the living God and allowing us to be a part of your church. 
And here we are, Lord, today at this moment and at this time. Thank you that you already know what we have need of before we ask you. And we even thank you, Lord, for what you've already done in our lives. Thank you for what we're about to receive. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Touch right now, Lord, both in the house and outside of the house. Every believer, every seeker, oh God, everyone that is hungry, Lord God, feed their souls. Everyone that is thirsty, fill their souls. Those that need your direction, Lord God, we ask for it in the name of Jesus. To the lonely, the downtrodden, the outcast, that you would lift up. Yeah, Lord, that you would even, Lord, unload them of the heavy burdens they carry. Help us all to cast all of our care upon you. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church. And be glorified in the furtherance of this service even to the salvation of souls for the edifying of your church and most of all that you would be glorified through Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior would everybody give God the best clap of your hands tell him thank you right now praise the Lord the Lord is worthy of all the glory, the Lord is worthy of all the honor and the praise. Truly, as the praise team was singing the song, there is none like you. It is the sentiments of my heart today. Not just a melody, not just a tune, but there is truly no one like Jesus. Would y'all help me if it fit the way you feel? Would you look up to the Lord, wave your hand and say, truly, Lord, there is nobody like you. Nobody that can compare to you. There is none like you. Somebody help me say. No one else can touch my heart like you do I can search I can search for all eternity Lord and find there is none like you I want y'all that really mean it to help me say it again there is There is none, there is none, none like you. Yeah. 
crucified, but we're going to move on. Because I feel like saying, Jesus. 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 There is something. Get a witness in the house. Master, Savior, Jesus. It's like the fragrance after. Thank <laughs> you. 
Look at the name and tell them it's Pentecost. Oh, that mercy. Let me call your attention today to the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank God for all of you that are tuned in. Praise the Lord to our service even now. Thank you, Jesus. The prophecy of Joel, chapter number two today. Prophecy of Joel. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. But there's something. Woo. But there's something. But there's something. Whoa. That name. Oh Lord. The 12th verse of the second chapter begins our reading today. Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning that rend your heart and not your garments Turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly gather the people sanctify the congregation assemble the elders gather the children and those that suck the breast let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of a closet let the priests the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say spare thy people O Lord Give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? 23rd verse, be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately. And he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Verse number 28, if you'll drop down and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. God bless you. Let the church say amen. Uh, you may be seated. I today am yet moved by the Holy Ghost to speak to us, to declare the message of the Lord, specifically to his people with an extension to all people. I want to talk today once again from the subject, God's plan to restore and save you. God's plan of restoration and Salvation specifically, God's plan of restoration and salvation. 
The prophecy of Joel is a very interesting book as to me all the Bible is. But each particular book of scripture has a certain uniqueness about it because the Bible literally are the express words of God. The Apostle Peter makes us aware that holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. I believe it is Elder Johnny James that described it like this, that God had numerous secretaries, but he himself is the author of the letter and of the word that is spoken or written. So when we have the word of God even on today before us, it is the expression that comes from God. The prophecy of Joel is interesting because it signifies some very profound things that I feel is important for us to consider. The name Joel, for example, itself means that Jehovah is God or that Jehovah is Lord. Uh, when we speak of God, everybody help me say God. When we speak of God, we, we are dealing with who is sovereign. When we speak of God, we, we deal with the supreme one, the creator of everything, everybody, uh, the author of time as well, eternity. When we speak of Jehovah as Lord, it means he rules and he reigns. I don't know how you feel today, but it's a wonderful consolation today to be reminded that he is Lord. He is Lord. If I were to sing another song, that would be one I would like to offer in praise to our God. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is in fact Lord. There are only three chapters in this prophecy of Joel. And again, some very interesting things as you read the prophecy are to be noted. There is no extensive biography to the life of Joel because in this I believe that God conveys to his people and even to bearers of the word that it's really not about us. It's really not about being seen. It's not about bringing attention to ourselves. The only thing that is referenced as it relates to Joel is who his father was. No long pedigree, no long line history in his biography. It is important, ladies and gentlemen, even when we desire to be used by God, it is very, very important. Listen to this. It's very, very important that we always keep the attention on Jesus. Praise the Lord. Another thing that I find very interesting in this particular text is there is no mention of a king. Oftentimes, especially in the Old Testament, during the time of the kings, many of the prophets in their writings to the people of God, it often included some words to be addressed to the king of the nation. But there is no mention here of a king. Chapter 1, chapter 2, or chapter 3 makes no mention 
of a king. This tells me, ladies and gentlemen, then, again, that Jehovah is God. He is Lord. That means then when we come to the prophecy of Joel, God wants us to know that he's bigger than presidents and kings. He's greater than politics. God's plans exceed all and everything. The period of time of Joel's prophecy. Now, how many folk will pray for me in a few minutes on Pentecost? You know what's interesting? On Pentecost, the thing that really birthed the Spirit of God was they were praying. I want to ask early here in the message, can I get a praying church? Because I got a feeling that the Holy Ghost will do a work if I can get a praying church. Oh, I mean right now, could I get a praying church for the Lord's help, for the Lord's deliverance? Praise the Lord period of time that Joel writes is also very interesting because the period covered is obviously addressing the people of God after they have been saved initially. Obviously, they are long out of Egypt. They have miraculously crossed the Red Sea by God's power. After having come out of Egypt and crossing the Red Sea, God has brought them through the wilderness. One of the things that is so very important for us to remember, no matter where you are. Could I preach in the house today? No matter where you are, even like today, no matter where you are right now, it is so very important that we remember where the Lord has already brought us. I wonder, I wonder right now in the house, could I get you to join me and look back over your life from where the Lord brought you from recent weeks, months, and really all the way across your life. Is there anybody that don't mind joining me and giving God a great praise for how far he's already brought you from? So by this time of Joel's prophecy, there are many different experiences that the people of God have already had. A lot of their experiences were with God. Other experiences included their family development. It included them having to experience their share of trials and problems. It included their ups and their downs. This period actually covers and includes the time of the establishment of kings coming into office. Help me, Jesus. So ladies and gentlemen, the point I make here at this time of the message is that God knows how to step into every episode of our lives. God is involved. And God can be depended upon no matter where we find ourselves. But not only does this particular prophecy address the history of the people of God. It likewise uh, addresses their present situation. And guess what? Their present situation had not really been a very positive one. It was a time that they were being subjected to issues all around them. We might call it somewhat a pandemic. They were being threatened and uh, there was much talk and even mixed emotions. Does that kind of sound familiar for us during the times in which we're in? But I want to say here again, brothers and sisters, that God knows how to step in to every episode of our lives. He knows when you're up, but thank God he knows when we're down. He knows when you feel good, but thank God he knows when you feel bad. 
He knows when you got money. I wish I could really preach here today. He knows when you ain't got no money. He knows when you got family around you and friends around you, but he knows when you don't feel like you got nobody around you. But he knows how to step in and address everything that goes on in our lives. It is during the time that they are presently going through that God sends Joel to speak to them, to address them, to make them aware of the fact that he is there. Uh, I just want to tell somebody here today that the Lord is there. Where is there? There is where you are. There even is here because in the midst of the word there is the word here. Help me if you will. Look over and tell somebody that the Lord is here. Praise the Lord. And when I say he's here, I don't mean simply he's in the building. He's here wherever you are in your state of mind. He's here wherever you are as it relates to the circumstances of your life. I said the Lord is here. And if the Lord is here, I've got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Would somebody give God praise for the fact that he is here? here. Praise the Lord. Joel's prophecy is very profound because he begins to share with the children of God about some of the devastation, some of their losses that they had recently experienced. And uh, uh, the Holy Ghost began to minister to me a man from this prophecy because it mirrors exactly what we're going through in the world right now. You see, ladies and gentlemen, there must be more than the voice of men that talk about everything that's going on. Oh, I believe if y'all pray for me a little while, the Lord's going to help us to get a word of deliverance. Did you hear what I said? I said, there must be more than the words of men in order for us to get the kind of help that we need. Opinions are flaring up all over the place. Uh, you have politicians with various opinions. You've got all kinds of opinions from men and women everywhere trying to make an assessment upon the things that are going on and primarily as in the case here in the prophecy of Joel, the things that had been going on were not so positive. They were rather negative. They were rather hurtful. It was causing pain, if you will. It was causing there to be frustration and even anger. And the thing that I'm giving God praise for is we have a God that knows all about our struggles. We, we, we're blessed, brothers and sisters, that we have a God that knows how to relate to us. And, and I made up my mind that even as a man of God, I made up my mind as a pastor, as a preacher, as a representative of God, that if I have a real God, that I would be a real man of God. Uh, because ladies and gentlemen, help me here. I feel the Holy Ghost, I'll tell you that now. But tell somebody that our God is real and our lives are real. So that means it's a match. It's a match. It's a match. Uh, what kind of shape would we be in, brothers and sisters, uh, if the God that we serve was not real? Because when we start to deal with life's issues, we don't need a mere figment of our imagination. We need a real God that can step in to our situations. Can I get a witness to that? Uh, I don't need a preacher uh, to just present a bunch of shenanigans. 
uh, to present to just try to charge me emotionally uh, or to perform theatrics uh, while in uh, a service. But we need a word from the Lord. Uh, I wish I had a witness in here. Somebody wave your hand if that fit the way you feel. I said, I need a word from the Lord. Praise the Lord. I need a proper perspective in my mind as I'm looking upon situations and I feel the Holy Ghost here. So ladies and gentlemen, let me just say to you, uh, the words that you hear spoken by anybody are influential. That means it will affect the way you think and the way that you feel. If that's the case, that means you got to be careful whose voice you're listening to. Somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, and it has never been more important. It's never become more critical than it is right now in the times in which we live. Uh, we live in information. We live uh, in a time uh, of information. We live also in uh, an information age that brings different technology. Uh, so now more than ever, people are all Line and you're hearing uh, and you're reading uh, and listening to a lot of voices. The Spirit of the Lord, even while we were going through the consecration of the past couple of weeks, was making me aware of the devices of Satan. Praise the Lord. Now just hear me here and specifically hear what thus saith the word of the Lord. And if you have an ear to hear what the Spirit says to the church, then please hear this. It is very important that we understand that the enemy that we fight is a devious enemy devil. And the Bible makes us aware in Ephesians chapter 2, I feel my help coming, uh, that Satan is in fact the prince and power of the air. Let me enlarge upon that. Uh, you may remember I said something about that particular text that God revealed to me some years back. And that is when uh, God gave Paul that word from Ephesians chapter 2, there was no television, there was no radio, there were no satellites, there was no modern technology uh, of devices of anything that we have but isn't it amazing that the word of God is so powerful it can speak to the present and to the future at the same time because now we have what is known as airwaves uh, through which now we have all kinds of media outlets uh, but if Satan is the prince and the power of the air, uh, the Holy Ghost led me and spoke to me to tell all of us that we must be careful of what we watch and what we listen to. Uh, because Satan is the one that is the prince and power of the air. In other words, you can count on him seeking to manipulate the airwaves. You can count on him trying his best to manipulate uh, social media, if you will. Uh, don't get nervous, nobody. I'm not telling you that you're wronged uh, to tap into social media uh, because it is the modern age in which we live. Uh, but there is a revelation that is very important for us to have because no matter how we advance and how much we achieve we can never go blind to the fact that we have an adversary and our adversary the Bible says uh, is as a roaring lion and he walketh about seeking whom he may devour he is likewise a deceiver he is called the God of 
this world. Uh, but what I'm glad about today uh, is that Satan uh, does not have power over our God. Uh, somebody shout hallelujah. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the word of God have already made the declaration to us when Jesus got up from the grave. Uh, if anybody had any doubt as to where the true power is, when he got up from the grave, after Satan thought that he had him down and destroyed, he rose up the third day after they had crucified him after he had shed his blood but when he got up from the grave he declared that all power in heaven and earth is in my hand I wonder do I have anybody that don't mind giving God praise on that fact alone praise God uh, I don't know if y'all beginning to hear me yet it doesn't mean that there are no kings it doesn't mean that there are no businesses. It doesn't mean that there are all kinds of caliber of people and material things in the world. I'm headed to the close of the message here, but in the prophecy of Joel, it is as though the Holy Ghost said, Joel, I want you to go to my people and tell them that the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. Ah, Y'all come on, help me here. Ah, uh, I didn't originate that, but it's a mighty good saying. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And the main thing is to focus on Jesus. Praise God. See, Joel, come on, help me say Joel. L. Praise God. It meant Jehovah is God. Somewhere in the character of Joel was to be the recognition that Joel was a representative of God. His name is Joel. In other words, when you see me, I want you to see more than me. When you hear me, I want you to hear more than me. I want you, when you see me, to see the Lord. When you hear me. I want you to be able to hear a word from the Lord. And so I want it to be understood that when I stand here today and speak to you, I want you to do more than see Michael Boyd. I want you to see Jesus. I want you to do more than hear my voice, I want you to hear the voice of the Lord. <laughs> when you examine Joel's prophecy, uh, Joel is used by God to help the people of God to get a proper perspective even upon the pandemic of their time he said now that which uh, uh, the caterpillar have eaten and the canker worm and the palm of worm and the locust I want you to know that somewhere in the midst of all of that activity and pandemic I want you to understand that I am still God I want you to understand even though men put their spin on what's going on it took a word from God to help the people of God to understand that I utilize the things of men even if it's the actions of men that cause pandemics and happenings. It does not negate the fact that I am God. Even though men have political offices, when I speak to you, I want you to know that my word exceeds the word of a king. That's why there's no reference to a king at all. Because what God was saying, I need somebody to hear my voice. Let me just pause right here to ask this question today to you that are under the sound of my voice. With all of the voices that are in circulation in the times in which we live. My question is, uh, who will hear the voice of the Lord? Ha! Who is willing to hear a word from God? Ha! Oh, men are scratching their heads. Ha! 
Ah, uh, politicians, uh, uh, the legislature, uh, every branch of government, executive branch, legislative branch, judicial branch, uh, everybody's trying to figure it out. Everybody has got a methodology as to how they feel things uh, ought to be done. And then the citizens of every city, uh, they've got their own personal feel and opinion <laughs> but God says for the moment scratch that not that it does not matter what men are saying at all uh, but when God has a word huh, it means you gotta tune everybody else out huh? and God said I just want to know huh, can I get the attention of my people huh? and today on Pentecost huh, the Lord sent me back here huh, to challenge God's people firstly huh, to ask is there anybody huh, that will give me an opportunity ha! is there anybody ha! that will give me the mic if you will ha! is there anybody ha! that will give attention ha! to anything I've got to say ha! he said I want you to know ha! first of all I see ha! everything that you're going through ha! and I don't want you to think ha! that I'm nowhere to be found Ha! So that's why I sent Joel. Ha! You see, Republicans, ha! help me preach, Lord, ha! and Democratic people, ha! they elect their own politicians. Ha! But I got news for y'all. Nobody ha, elected Jesus to be God. Ha, he was God before man was made. Ha, he was God before anything that is made was made. Ha, he was God before there was a sun. Ha, before there was a moon. Ha, oh, help me, Lord. Ha, he was God ha, before there was a White House. Ha, he was God ha, before the United Nations was formed. Ha! He was God ha! before the European Union was formed ha! or the Trilateral Commission ha! or the Illuminati ha! or Freemasons. Ha! He was God ha! before anybody ha! became a celebrity. Ha! He was God ha! before any man became rich. Ha! He was God ha! ahead of the black man. Ha! He was God. God ha, ahead of the white man. Ha, he was God ha, ahead of the Hispanic. Ha, he was God ha, ahead of males ha, and of females ha, but I want you to know ha, that God loves you ha, I want you to know ha, that when all else fails ha, and you're trying ha, to figure things out ha, I need y'all to help me here ha, as I'm getting ready to close ha, look at your neighbor ha, and say neighbor ha, and just sort of scratch your head like this ha, look at them and say while ha, we're trying ha, to figure things out, ha, he's already, ha, Lord have mercy, ha, he's already ha, worked it out. Ha, and so in Joel, ha, when the Lord began ha, to put his word ha, on their problem, ha, when he began ha, to give them ha, a divine perspective, he said, I want you ha, then ha, uh, to gather my people ha, together. Ha, and I, ha, I begin ha, to look at that. Ha, I said, Lord, ha, isn't that amazing ha, that during a time like this, ha, you open up a door ha, for us to gather together. Ha. God said, that's how I work it. Ha, I don't care ha, what it's been like. Ha, I don't care ha, even what it looks like. Ha, you can't afford ha, to just listen to man. Ha, somebody better hear what I'm telling you. Ha, you need a word. Ha, 
from the Lord. Ha! Somebody said, Bishop. Ha! I said, yeah. Ha! They said, what we gonna do ha! about everything ha! that's going on? Ha! Well, ha! I hear him say, ha! let's get ourselves together. Ha! Let's rend ha! our hearts ha! and not our garments. Ha! Let's not rise to riot. Ha! But can I get ha! a praying church? Ha! Gather my elders. Ha! Gather my saints. Ha! Get the mamas ha! and get the daddies. Ha! Get the bride ha! and the bridegroom. Ha! Tell them to come out of their closet ha! and let them gather together ha! and let them say, ha! Oh Lord, ha! spare your people. Ha! Can I get a praying church in it? I said, can I ha, get a praying church? Ha, can I get three ha, folk over here? Ha, especially if you are a leader. Ha, can I get you ha, to start a prayer wheel? Ha, can I get y'all up here? Ha, somebody said, oh, Lord. Ha, woo, ha, oh, Lord. Ha, help your people. Ha, your people huh? oh lord huh? heal your people huh? oh lord huh? step in the white house huh? oh lord huh? step in the hospital huh? oh lord huh? step in our homes huh? step in our minds huh? step in our circumstances huh? and save your people the Lord said if I can get my people to understand my plan I didn't say the government plan today I'm preaching about God's plan of restoration and salvation but somebody gotta hear God's word praise the Lord said well maybe we ought to get the blacks together and go march <laughs> I do understand that I'm a black man last I checked praise God I don't like the abuse against our community but I don't like it against any community so I can feel our pain but ladies and gentlemen ha, there's some things that don't work there are some things that don't solve the problem ha, there are some things I don't care how you fuss I don't care how you argue ha, I don't care how you blow up Facebook ha, I don't care what you do ha, I want you to understand ha, when society ha, gets broken down as it is, ha, we got to have more ha, than political strategy. Ha, we got to have more ha, than financial strategy. Ha, we got to have more ha, than a racial movement. Ha, we need power ha, from on high. Ha, we need the power ha, that only God can solve. Ha, you can line up the police. Ha, you can even establish ha, martial law. Ha, but you'll never ha, legislate behavior. Ha, there's something ha, down in man ha, that only God can solve. Ha, and this is where ha, Joel ha, was shot forth in a cannon ha, by the Holy Ghost. Ha, and said, tell my people, ha, not only ha, am I going to bless them now ha, when they repent ha, and turn to me. Did y'all hear that? Ha, 
God said to tell you ha, it's time to repent ha, because we've gone astray ha, from the Lord. Ha. Some of you ha, have not paid attention ha, to where you are with God. Ha. But God said if I can get ha, you to return to me ha, with all your heart. Ha, if I can get you to pray ha, like you ought to pray ha, then that which the canker worm ha, and the canker worm and the caterpillar ha, and the locusts have eaten ha, I'm going to turn it around ha, look at that neighbor and say neighbor ha, God's about to turn ha, things around ha, how many of y'all fasted ha, when we called the fast ha, how many of y'all been on the Bible reading journey ha, I'm trying to tell y'all this is God's plan ha, tell a neighbor it's God's plan ha, for rest Restoration ha, and salvation. Ha, and so God said, ha, if you move, ha, then I'm gonna move. Ha, if you repent, ha, then I, I will restore. Ha, if you armor yourself, ha, then I, I will exalt you. Ha, it's a divine plan ha, and strategy. Ha, and ha, the Lord said, ha, before I take it back, ha, I'll add more to it. Ha. He said, it shall ha, come to pass ha, in the last days. Ha. I'm going to pour out ha, my spirit ha, of all flesh. Ha. What we need ha, is a move of the Holy Ghost. Ha. What mankind needs ha, is the spirit of God, ha, not the spirit ha, of Donald Trump ha, or Barack Obama ha, or of any other person. Ha. But we need the spirit ha, of Almighty God. God's plan. Stand to your feet, everybody. God's plan. I say God's plan of restoration and salvation. Restoration. Everybody say restoration. restoration. Say it another time. Restoration. restoration. That means the people of God. I need my people to get it together so I can restore them. But God did not only speak to their current situation, he spoke to their future. And the future extended to all people. Because the next time you pick up where Joel leaves off, we come to Pentecost. And Pentecost is when there is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me today if you can. Past our current time, there is a word of God that speaks to the people of God of today that says, if we would get it together, not only would God bring about some restoration of our current crisis, but God would even go as far as to down in our future and future generations. God will bring about a mighty move of his spirit. Oh, somebody ought to lift your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. So he said, the last days I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. See the white man, yes, needs the spirit of God. But the black man needs the spirit of God. And the Hispanic, the Asians, all people, all races, all countries, the entire world, what we need is God's plan of restoration and salvation. He said your sons, your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. In other words, there's a blessing for every person, no matter who they are, no matter what stage of life you're in. Can y'all hear that? Can y'all hear that? No matter what stage or phase of life, when we meet God's requirement to his plan, that everybody wins. No matter who you are, 
the old men that dream dreams. He said also, upon your handmaidens, upon your servants, I will pour out my spirit. My spirit. That is the thing that God actually promised that would really turn things around in our lives. How many of you all believe God to turn things around? Now, see, before we expect God to turn things around, he called for us to turn. You see how that works? Why would we expect God to turn and change things if we're not going to turn? He don't need to be the only one moving. God said, what I want is a covenant that if you're willing to do your part, I will do the part you cannot do. And I will work some miracles in your life. Everybody by your heads right now want to pray as we're extending an invitation to somebody to come to Christ right now. Praise the Lord. Somebody that needs Jesus. If you're here in this house and this word of the Lord have brought you to a turning point, as the ministers, the altar workers move in here right now. If you, through this word, have arrived at that place where I realize I need to turn, I need to make a change. The Lord said, no, don't turn and just go to church. He said, turn even to me. Turn to me. Turn to me. Listen, friends. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, brothers and sisters. Time is out for everybody just going to church. It's time to really turn toward the Lord. The kind of turn that's going to actually make a difference in your life. The kind of turn that will actually bring about the blessing. The scripture said that when this word went out, he said, if you would turn to me and rend your heart and that, he said, who knoweth whether the Lord will not turn and leave a blessing behind him. Praise the Lord. Don't you want to be blessed? Hallelujah to God. And so while we sing here today, if you're in the house and you need to make a change, we're here. Yes, praise the Lord. And we are willing to help you like if you went to the doctor. Praise the Lord. Whatever way that we can be of assistance to you to make your connection with the Lord Jesus Christ, we're inviting you right here, right now. If you're online and you've not really been going God's direction, then today... We make an appeal to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn to him. He wants to bless you. He wants to restore and he wants to save you. Thank you, Jesus. So while we sing here today, is there anybody in the house, anybody that needs the Lord? You can step out the aisle. You'll stand right down here before we're willing to pray with you right now. If you've never been born again, you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus, listen. We've got a renovated pool. We've got fresh water in the pool. We're ready to baptize somebody in the mighty name of Jesus. If you're without the spirit of God that was preached about here today, I'm saying to you today that the spirit of God is available. I want you to know that whatever your past have been, that when you meet God's requirement, if you accept his plan, you're willing to receive his plan, then your ladder will be greater than all your past. Everybody lift those hands. Can I get a praying church here today as we pray? Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus. Today, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for your plan of restoration and salvation. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, the men, the women, the boys, the girls, those that have heard this word today and have need, Lord, of a relationship with you. We pray in the name of Jesus for the courage to be granted to them, Lord, to respond in the manner, Lord, that they should according to your word. Those, Lord, that are outside the ark of safety, they may actually make that turn, make that change to come. Lord, not just to the church, but you said, turn even unto me, that they may literally come to you, experiencing the power of your grace, your restoration, and salvation. We trust you to do it. We believe you for it. 
in the master's name of Jesus. Come on, clap your hands. Give God great praise. Thank you, Jesus. Would you clap your hands another time? Say your ladder. Your ladder will be greater than your past. Your ladder will be greater than your past. God bless you.